Hey guys, Matt from Just Rent It here. Um, my video about my truck that I recently posted, towards the end of that I went over some tools and things that I had bought from an auction. Uh, it was just kind of like a lot, like you bid on a price and you grab some of the stuff that you wanted. So I got a lot of random stuff and I have some really cool things you can check out the end of that video if you want to see exactly what I got. But I have a video coming up all about hand grips on tools uh, from uh, the ones that are existing when you buy things sometimes the rubber grip or the the dip grip uh, that they have um, also tools that don't have grips uh, trying to put something on there if you want to increase the grip or like a lot of times uh, certain breaker bars and, and ratchets and things don't have any grips on them so we're gonna go into that in a video hopefully maybe here in a couple days I'll get that one done but regardless I was soaking uh, some of these rusty tools that I got in vinegar to clean off the rust and so I could clean them up I was gonna dip them uh, in uh, plasti dip to create a grip on these tools that didn't have them I figured old rusty tools right well I had some surprises the first one I mentioned in the video before I have let's see if I can get it to focus on this I have this craftsman uh, I want to say it's like a six or seven inch uh, wire cutters dykes if you want to call it that and that's the pattern in the handle and I thought these were really cool um, I looked them up they they used this rough design from anywhere in like the mid 30s to around the late 50s somewhere in there so chances are these are actually pretty old <clears throat> I cleaned them up uh, they still kind of have a, a bit of a tarnish to them I didn't try to get all the pitting and everything out I left that there because I think it adds to the tools but I was gonna dip these uh, now that I know how old they are, I'm not. Uh, then, I had this little adjustable wrench, right? It's like a 6 inch adjustable wrench. Uh, biggest size that it goes up to, I believe, is like 3 quarter. Uh, it's actually really nice, right? Uh, but, after I cleaned it up, soaked it in vinegar, and started shining it and doing all of this, I found the actual markings on here it's from JP Danielson a company in Jamestown New York it's called a better grip six inch crescent now um, the interesting thing about this that I thought a feature that I had not really seen on anything before was if you look there oh it's not gonna wanna zoom in on it it's got it's a half inch half inch 12 point built into the loop on the end uh, I thought that was really cool I'd never seen that before so once I saw that I'm like okay well, let me look up a little bit more about that so I looked up more about it I also had this pair of pliers I was gonna dip they have a little bit of ornate work if you can see it there on the handle I have to duck out of the way I have a new camera and it's actually a camcorder so it tries to keep everything in focus at all times so that's gonna be something I'll have to work on but so I have these thin very thin pliers too so <clears throat> I started looking some stuff up about the JP Danielson company and for that we are going to have to go to the command center but I will tell you all about what I found okay guys so we are here on a website called Alloy artifacts.org. Uh, we're looking up information on the J.P. Danielson company and here we are in the introduction. So uh, I'm not going to read everything here to you verbatim but uh, the first incarnation of the company began in 1903 as a partnership between J.P. Danielson and Carl Peterson in Jamestown, New York. Okay, uh, they originally operated as the makers of pliers, uh, wrenches, including a type of plier wrench 
known as a lightning wrench, which is pictured here. Kind of interesting. Uh, it's a black and white photo. You can't really see a whole lot of detail about it, but <clears throat> kind of interesting. Now, here's where things really start getting interesting. Um, uh, as recently as October 2015, uh, somebody discovered um, a twist uh, in what happened with the company. Apparently, Carl Peterson uh, left the J.P. Danielson company and Carl went on, you see, follow my mouse here, Carl Peterson went on to found the Crescent Tool Company. He left uh, his leaving of the J.P. Danielson's uh, Danielson company was posted or published um, in the 1907 edition of Hardware, uh, I'm guessing that was a magazine or a newspaper publication, September 10th, 1907. So, and then he went on to form the Crescent Tool Company, and I actually have a Crescent Adjustable Wrench, and it does say on it, uh, the original since 1907. So that makes a lot of sense there. <coughs> so... Basically, what we have here is, uh, I mean, for all intents and purposes, it's the precursor to the crescent wrench. So, um, I was looking around on here, and yeah, here's a little bit. They talk about these better grip crescent style wrenches. Um, and and J.P. Danielson kept going. I mean, they, they were still in production for quite some time. Uh, but here we go and we're getting into the adjustable wrenches so this is what i found out um here's an 8 inch there's a 12 inch model these are newer um, and you can tell because they've taken out the 12 point socket from the uh, end of the wrench here not sure why i mean i know that sounds silly but that i think is just it's a nice little feature. I don't know too many people that actually like hang those on like a belt loop or anything. So I don't, I wouldn't worry about it. I'd, I'd rather have it. Uh, of course, uh, depending on your size, they put the most common uh, fastener size on that 12 point. So like here's a 4 inch. Um, it's got a 5 uh opening. So, I mean, that's pretty cool. Um, here's the 8 inch, and if you look at the 8 inch, it's got a 9 16 uh, 12 point in it. So, that's pretty cool. Uh, <clears throat> here's one. I thought this one was kind of interesting. It's got a 6 point. I'm not sure uh, when they did that. This one says it was made in 32 or 33 somewhere there but i thought that was pretty cool that one's got six uh point in it and here's a 10 inch and the 10 inch has a 5 8 I, I just thought that was really cool so it goes down a little bit so then here we are in the six inch adjustable wrench area and what i found based on my markings and what i have is mine looks more like this one i believe and these were um before the war so what happened was they were doing um this production and then uh they went during the wartime years here you can follow my mouse in 1942 to 1945 um, they moved from the Valladium to a regular forged steel, and you can see up here, this one was made in 44, uh, and then, uh, here's one of the six inches, uh, like mine, made before. Uh, so, yeah, these were made 
before the war because they still have the Valadium. And then after the war, at some point, they went back, but then the, uh, the markings are different on the, uh, the wrench itself, the, the name lettering and whatnot. But, yeah, I mean, I was going to use this little crescent wrench, uh, at work. Like, I, I thought it was kind of cool. I was like, all right, like, I'll, you know, why not? I can always use, like, a little uh, pocket-sized crescent wrench. And here I come to find out, I mean, this thing, what is it? It's almost 2020. This thing's 80 years old-ish, or, well, 75, 75-year-old 75 crescent wrench. And so then <clears throat> I was looking through this. And I'm looking at some of their other stuff. Okay, slip joint pliers. Here's their, they call them parrot head uh, combination pliers. We would know them as channel locks today. Here's a set of long nose thin pliers. Here's a set of, uh, calls them burner pliers, uh, gas burner pliers. Uh, don't know much about those. But then I start getting into here. <clears throat> And this is where I found something else very interesting. And here they are. This is that set of thin uh, nose pliers. Here's the marking on the handle. I know you guys, uh, the detail earlier probably wasn't great. But here's uh, the detail on the pliers. Now that I've cleaned them up, they were all rust covered. I do actually have the markings here for the J.P. Danielson's company. And as I showed you in the uh, picture before, these are actually pretty thin. So uh, I thought that was something that was just really cool um, that I actually kind of have a, a matching set. I have the thin nose pliers and I have the crescent wrench. And these, uh, right again... Um, are suggested to be made around 1942 uh, to 47, so sometime therein uh, before the war. So, you know, these tools that I have here that I was planning on throwing some Plasti Dip on to make some rubber grips for them, it, it, it turns out they're, you know, the 75 years old as far as the um, J.P. Danielson's stuff goes, and the Craftsman uh, wire cutters, those, they made that style from anywhere between 1930 uh, and 1950-something, um, so, like, it's real, apparently it's a crapshoot trying to date some of the specific Craftsman stuff back in the day, like, that you're lucky that it even says Craftsman on it. Other than that, you're you're struggling to find the little differences between all the stuff. But yeah, so they're they're old. They're at least what? Let's assume they're uh, about the same age as the other ones. Uh, the 40s or 50s to the later end of the date range. They're still, you know, 60, 70 years old. So. I thought this was really interesting, guys, and I figured I'd share it with you. I don't know what to do with these. Um, I can't really use them. They're not worth an astronomical amount of money. So, guys, now we know a little bit more about where some of these tools came from. And the fact that they're, I mean, these are, these two here for sure are like 70 years old. Uh, this here, we're guessing it's about the same. It could be as old as 90, but uh, we're just going to safely assume about 70 uh, towards the later end of the date range of the manufacturing style of these uh, wire cutters. What should I do with them? I mean, uh, they cleaned up pretty well. They still look old, right? But... I don't know what to do with them. I thought about giving them away. I'm not going to use them. They're too old and, and delicate. I don't really have a whole bunch of old tools in my collection. So, uh, 
I thought I might give them away. Let me know what you guys think. Is anybody interested? Would they want one or uh, all of these as like a gift? I, I don't know. I don't know what to do with them. I, I would feel bad trying to actually use them. I will say, though, that the Craftsman wire cutters, uh, I actually uh, cut some weld wire with them, and it's uh, a little thicker stuff, The uh, like the .45. Um, and it they're still sharp they're they're there's no chips there's it's nuts like the quality of these tools just goes to show you that we've come a long way uh and we've fallen a little bit i think in terms of quality because these still look about as good as you could expect and i don't expect to see any of our current stuff lasting 70 years and still being supremely functional so <clears throat> that's it i hope you guys enjoyed this uh quick little tidbit of information again uh like comment subscribe to the channel i appreciate it and uh yeah if somebody's interested in in having these tools for their personal collection uh let me know in the comments down below maybe i can uh work something out send them out or do like a giveaway later all right, thanks guys. Matt from Just Wrench It. I'll see you later.